It may be easy for people to say, oh, well, this isn't affecting me. Well, it's affecting not only our, the spirit of our country, the, the lives, but it's really affecting our marginalized populations in a way that, that, that in some cases feels like an actual war. And, and they're wondering, where, where are you? You know, often we hear about countries scream out, America, where are you when we're in such need? Now it's America screaming out for itself and it's getting no answer. That's my next guest tonight, uh, actor and activist Sean Penn, whose relief organization CORE is doing COVID testing in the United States because nearly six months into this pandemic, we still have no real national testing plan. This is Full Circle. And welcome to Full Circle. I'm Anderson Cooper. A new tradition here on the program for our Friday shows is for me to get to talk to one person about how they are living through this particular moment in history. Sean Penn is perhaps busier than most. Joining me now to fill us in for a segment we call You and Your Quarantine is Sean Penn. Sean, thanks for being uh, with us. Welcome back. Um, thanks I get for having to, me. I, I want to get to your work with CORE in just a moment, but first of all, I, I did hear that some congratulations are in order. You, Is it true you oh, got yes. married? Yes, yeah. yes. I got married. Congratulations. Pretty, uh, most people haven't, I haven't really done anything over the last couple of months and you got married, so good for you. Well, um, I, my, my, my wife, my wife, Layla, was uh, very involved in our organization core and it became a kind of, you know, a time of partnership in, a, in an enhanced way and we thought we'd do it during, during this period. Well, that's awesome. Um, the, Talk about the, the work that, that, that you are doing for, for CORE right now, because uh, when you and I spoke early on when you had really just first started getting involved in Los Angeles and testing, um, what are you working on now? Yeah, so we, we, had, we expanded the Los Angeles testing and went out to eight cities throughout the country, um, all, all, both working in, in uh, uh, fixed sites as well as in uh, mobile sites where we're able to get to you know, in that segment that you showed, we were able to get uh, very focused rather than the catch-all sites with the, with the most marginalized communities because we're able to target that, to work with community leaders, to get buy-in locally, and then to, to, to bring the testing uh, to that area. Uh, so, yeah, you're, you're... so we're throughout the country that way. We also are working uh, some shelter work, uh, particularly in Navajo Nation. You know, the Navajo Nation is an extraordinary uh, microcosm of what can be success. They've tested 45% of their entire population, which is really extraordinary when you consider uh, what it, the, how far less it is in most of the populations. So that, and that's a combination of, of community buy-in, a reverence for elders and leadership, uh, President Nez and the chapter uh, uh, presidents as well. It's really, that, it's, it's becoming a kind of learning zone for us. Sean, what, what do you think is going on with this administration and our, sci our scientists? I mean, we have seen now the FDA, the head of the FDA at a press conference with the president saying something which is just completely inaccurate about, uh, about uh, use of plasma and when the, the unauthorized, uh, uh, when the, uh, the emergency authorization was, was announced, uh, which was a reversal of earlier FDA ruling, uh, he gave out factually wrong information. The press person has now been fired at the FDA. And we've also seen just recently the CDC, in, sort of in the dead of night, just changing their guidelines on who should be tested, essentially that asymptomatic people didn't necessarily need to, to be tested. Um, and now kind of walking that back, it seems, I mean, from the outside, it just seems incredibly alarming that our scientists seem now to be bending to political pressure more than I've seen ever. Yes, it, it, it is very alarming. I think that, it, it, that responsibly also, what we can say is that the leaderships at the CDC and the FDA have, have, have certainly um, um, you know, you know, become uh, sheep to this administration, and and there's something, you know, that I thought in terms of, uh, you know, when we've talked about Katrina in the past, we'll remember uh, when President Bush, uh, referring to Michael Brown, then director of FEMA, said, "Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job," 
and and the way and, and what we what we found was that there was no job being done and why that was is because his previous experience was to oversee the judges of Arabian horse shows the there there is a lot of room both for republicans democrats independents i think a lot of room for extraordinarily talented grassroots candidates uh, politicians to rise and i think on both sides for the oversight and the consensus in this country it's important that that possibility is there however we've become a country i think that has lost track of what boxers call gym hours and there the, the cynicism about politicians is is so understandable and yet uh, uh, there are such extraordinary people working in service uh, in in our country and in the CDC and and in the FDA. And what's happened here is that when where we have a president who, who virtually would not be competent to deal with any of the crises that might assault any country at any time, um, his his force of personality has put these people. Um, in a vice hold, and they, they, they were clearly not strong enough individuals uh, to maintain uh, the, the responsibility they have to the country or to the scientists that work under them. Uh, we are also grateful to Dr. Fauci that he's a, but, but isn't it strange to have a single exception on that level? Well, also, I mean, Dr. Fauci has been silenced. I mean, we all saw this happening in slow motion, and you know, he, he, I mean, there was just this article recently about, you know, he's really not allowed to appear on, on certainly on, on, you know, it's, he's hardly ever on CNN these days. He's hardly on any kind of broadcast networks or anything. He's on a lot of small podcasts and, and, you know, I'm glad they allow him to do that. And he's willing to kind of go anywhere to try to get this message across. But it's extraordinary to me that, you know, one of the nations, if not the leading expert on on, uh, on this kind of a situation is is muzzled like this. And to your point, I think it's an important one. It's there's still all these great scientists at, at CDC, all these, you know, scientists, people working hard at the FDA. But it does seem it's the leadership which is is, you know, kowtowing to to this pressure. I mean, we've seen the CDC repeatedly alter guidelines, uh, even on school safety, you know, being told that their guidelines were too strong and saying, oh, well, we'll come up with new ones, you know, in a couple of days. Yes, well, well, it's it's the tried and true uh, repetition of lies um, that that this, uh, w you know, which is less an administration than a campaign at, at, at this point, or actually, in my view, throughout uh, the last four years. And, you know, it's very easy, I think, to be directly critical of, of, of the president, but what I could always, my, my sense of, of, of the president is that he's doing the best he can because this is him on a cellular level. Um, what's been shocking, even to the most skeptical, most cynical of us, is the way in which the Republican Party, and now these scientists as well, um, virtually have no personal identity of ethics whatsoever. And as a result, we're moving in on 200,000 dead Americans. And it, it's just, you, you know, it, it, I, we all think of the moment where Peter Finch says in network, you know, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. But for the moment, we are. And so my hope is that these, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, I think probably they leading the way, but because there is so much consensus support uh, for a, a, a more equal America, um, that if, the, if, if, if we practice now holding politicians' feet to the fire in support uh, for a change in this administration, then I think we'll be ready to maintain holding politicians' feet to the fire when there's a new administration, because be a Democrat or Republican, at the end of the day, we are a, a, a group of humans in this, in this country and on Earth that share the equivalent of a minute together in our own existence. And, it, it, you know, I think we all want to look back from wherever the afterlife is or isn't and say, you, you know, we did something together. 
And so that's where we are. And I do think we're in a, it's precarious. I, the, I, I don't think that it's a slam dunk because of polling or anything else that, um, that Biden-Harris will win this. Um, and, and we're witnessing what a period of time looks like when crisis comes to incompetence. And that is essentially what is, 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 is driving this. And, and in lieu of competence is narcissism, power for its own sake, and cowardice. And the cowardice of people like Mitch McConnell um, is, it, it was even striking to me. Um, John, I appreciate you joining us, um, and, and thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, I want to, for our viewers, for more information about CORE's COVID-19 response or to volunteer, donate, you can go to coreresponse.org slash COVID-19. That does it for Full Circle. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern Time Monday. Remember, you can stream the show anytime by going to CNN.com slash Full Circle, and you can also sign up for alerts from the CNN app. Until then, tune to AC360 on CNN, 8 p.m. tonight special two-hour edition of the program, including my interview with Jacob Blake's father. I'll see you soon.